Hi, my name is Gene, and I want to talk to you today about Cloud Custodian. Cloud Custodian is an open source project located at cloudcustodian.io, and it allows you to interact with cloud resources, things that are in AWS, uh, or you can do it in Azure or uh, Google Cloud Platform, uh, things like systems, instances that you have up and running, uh, security groups, user accounts, anything that you can interact with through the API or through the console, as a matter of fact, just it's going to save you the time to write the code to do that interaction. It's just going to work with a YAML file using a simple domain-specific language, very easy to read, very easy to maintain. Uh, someone else is doing all the hard lifting for you so you don't have to write boilerplate code over and over. So let me jump right in and show you kind of what it looks like. Um, first, we start with installing it. So to install it, I already have Python installed, and uh, we can just use pip to install it with pip install c7n. I already have it, so you see all the pieces there. But you can already see uh, if you've done any programming to deal with um, AWS resources, Boto3 uh, is kind of the underlying tool that uh, Python always seems to use. So uh, this saves you from working with that. Uh, the other thing I need to make sure is that my AWS uh, credentials are set up correctly, which they are. Um, so here we go. So let's start with a really simple policy here. This policy starts with policies, and this one is called EC2 running instances. It's going to work on EC2 instances. I have a comment here that says it's going to report on any of the running instances. And you can see right here it's doing a filter on the state name running. It's that simple, right? Anything that's running. Now, how do I know how to get that? Well, Custodian, now that it's installed, Custodian has a help feature uh, called Schema where I can look at what's available on AWS. You can see all sorts of different resources I could work on, but I can drill in even further. I can look at the EC2 instances, right, and see all the actions and filters that it has on it. I'm looking at filter here, actions, the things that would happen to it. And if I wanted to look at filters, I could get details on any particular one. For instance, if I wanted to look at, oops, dot subnet, I could filter on what subnet they're in and see a whole schema out of them. Uh, but the actual easier way to do that, although this will give you absolutely every bit of detail you need, is to take a look at the website, and if I go into the docs, um, they not only have com very complete docs and example, they have all these examples here. Um, so I could actually see, just you know, look at some of these and reverse engineer how they do some of the things and some of the pieces uh, to do it. So this one happens to be really simple. I'm just gonna look for anything that's state name running, um, and the way I run this, is to do custodian run. I have to send the output somewhere. So I'm just going to call this out output, right? And I'm going to give it a region that I'm working in. Oops, just crash. I'm going to do SEs2. Um, and this one is just running instances, right? So I run that. You can see very quickly it comes back. And I see that it worked on two of them, on US East 2, on EC2 instances running this policy. And that's great, but it didn't show me anything, but that's because I have to get a report back. Um, the report has to work out of the data it collected that I put into that output directory. And there I get a CSV type report, right? And it shows me some of the information found. I have two instances. One's at 127, one's at dot 193. And if I was to go into my console, I can take a look and see, sure enough, I have one at 127 and one at 193. Let me just take a quick look at these. Um, we normally tag them with a uh, some the name, obviously, of it, but we also usually tag our instances 
with an owner, and in this case, the owner is me, but I only tagged web server zero, not web server one. So let's go ahead and look at how we could find that out and fix that through Cloud Custodian. All right, so I have these two. Well, first, I did the report, but I could actually see that information here by just adding a custom field. I'm gonna call that field owner, and I'm gonna put the value of that field in the report as the owner value of the owner tag. And I'm just running a report again. I don't need to collect the information again. I'm gonna run my running instances, and this time it's gonna spit out, and sure enough, I see the one at 127 has my email address set as the owner, which is this new tag here, owner. And I could do that with any number of tags to generate a CSV report that I could, I could spit back. All right, so they're very easy to do, very clean. Um, let's go ahead and write uh, one that's going to take a look at anything that's tagged with me, right? We'd expect it should get one here, right? So I have another policy here. My instances, again, it's working on EC2s. I give it a comment in there so I know what it's doing. And I'm looking this filter instead of state running. I'm just looking for anything with the tag owner of Eugene Gottimer at steampunk.com. So let's clear this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run um, custodian run region of US East 2. Oh, I need an output there. Let's make this one. Output two doesn't matter. I could rewrite it, re reuse it. We could overwrite it. Um, that all looks fine. And uh, yeah, my instances, right? And so this should tell us it finds one. Right? And sure enough, it does. And if I wanted to do ahead, go ahead and do that report, I could see it comes back with the one at 127, not the one at the uh, 193. I think it was. So easy enough to do. Okay, well, what if I wanted to tag anything that wasn't, didn't have an owner, and I want to say, hey, I'm just going to take responsibility for all of them. I'm going to find them all. I'm going to take responsibility for them. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make up a, f uh, a new file here. Um, let's go ahead, file new. This one is going to be... Save it here. This one is going to be a YAML file. Tag not non owned or no owner tag. That's even better. No owner tag. Okay, no owner tag dot YAML. I'm just going to actually grab all of this. Take the same thing. Um, this be no owner tag. Without an owner tag. And what am I going to put for the filter? Well, it turns out I can just do absent. Now I could look at the schema again to see how that uh, to see that that's true. But the easier way again, like I said, is we could go ahead and look at some of these examples um, and just read through them. And it turns out there's one here on tags where it's clear I could do a policy that filtered on tag owner absent, right? And this one actually looks on all three of those missing or any of those three missing, right? Um, owner and project. But in my case, I just want owner absent. Like I said, I could look at the schema too and I could find that custodian schema, AWS, EC2, um, this is going to be filters, right, and uh, let's say it produces value, right, um, and you can see in here it has all the information about uh, equals and values, and I'd have to go through a little bit more detail to find out how to get the, um, I guess it's not values that I was looking at, uh, or value. Let's see in filters, it tells me there's one for absent. Now, anyway, I have an example. I know that one will do it. Let's go ahead in and let's add something we hadn't done up till now. Let's add an action. 
I say if I find something that's absent, I want to go ahead and I want to tag it. And again, if I look at this example, right, for adding a tag, there's an actions tag, key, and value. I can do a type tag and I can add a key and value. So for me here, action type tag, key is going to be owner, value is going to be um, and let's go ahead just since I'm doing it here let's go ahead and let's add another tag as well anything that wasn't tagged I want to remember that it wasn't tagged that I picked it up Here we go. So I'm going to add two tags to anybody that doesn't already have an owner tag, so just so we can see it happen. All right, so let's go ahead and let's clear this. Ah, wrong screen. Clear this, and let's go ahead. Custodian, run. Out. Put sure. I'll put three. Um, I like I said, I don't need to keep these around. I could overwrite them and keep them separate. Um, region US is two. And this one is called no owner tag. And when I run that, oh, has unknown keys actions typo. Okay. Easy enough. There we go. So it found one, and it ran two action tags, one here and one here, and it did them. And that's great. So now let's take a quick look over at what happened, look at the instances, and I'm going to refresh it just to make sure. If I look here, web server zero, which shouldn't have been affected. That already had an owner tag. Great. And... Web server one has now has an original owner was untagged and now has the owner. Great, right? But the whole point of this was we don't have to go back to the console and we already actually had code to do this. Let's go back and run the my instances again. See, that's weird. It ran again. It's a count of one, but let's go ahead and just run the report and see what we see. Uh, my instances, and let's go ahead and add an owner field. Oh, that's strange. See, it only comes back with one, but we know both of them have the tags, right? Well, it turns out that Custodian does some caching for us. Um, what Custodian is doing is making sure that it's not running these commands over and over. So if you run them again within 15 minutes, it just uses the same data. So what we can do though, is we can go ahead and add in a cache period here to reset it. I could manually just remove the cache file as well. And if I run this again, this time I get two, and now I can rerun the report because it has the new data. And sure enough, this time it found both of them. All right, so very easy. Um, well, let's do one more thing. Let's say I wanted to add some other tags, right? Um, this is very similar, right? I could go ahead and add a tag here to put in a value for cloud intro. It's just working on EC2 instances. This one is uh, at project. And we want to report. We want to add a project tag uh, for all my instances that don't have a project. All right, so we're gonna filter this one on tag project absent with my tag and it's filters. We need both of them. All right, is that right? Nope, how to do filters and 
a quick look again. There we go. So both of those. And so if it had no project tag, we're going to go ahead and tag it if it was owned by me. All right. Clear this. And run it one more time. Uh, this one's going to be like the output GERS for this time. And this one was add project. Oh, and I had the cache period of zero, but that's not going to hurt it. Right, so it added two of them. But now if I was to run it again with that cache period of zero again, um, this time the count was zero, right? So it tagged the ones that didn't have it. This time it didn't find it, it didn't have it because we tagged them all, right? So those are real simple examples, but a little bit more about what you can do. Like I said, look through the examples. Um, if I go in here, some of the stuff you can do is add tags that, um, this one, if you set up this policy, uh, you can look for hours that it should be shut down on if it has a certain type of tag. Um, they have a couple different examples in here on it, um, policy examples, right? Where they have it, if it's tagged um, with a certain tag, it'll go ahead and shut it down off hours and shut it back on, on hours, meaning, you know, in the mornings we can start, we can, in the evenings, we could shut it down. In the mornings, we could start it back up. And they have a whole way of doing holidays on it and setting different tags. Uh, we use that throughout Steampunk to do it. Um, there's also some other things in here uh, in these docs, including some other tools. One of them that we use at Steampunk quite extensively is this C7 org, C7N org, which lets you run against multiple AWS accounts. So uh, we can give certain A uh, I am roles to it and run a script uh, uh, policy across many different accounts just with a configuration file with the accounts in it, uh, just using those I am roles. Um, so things like the, the off hours, right? We can shut machines down that are tagged to say, hey, shut this down at night, bring it back up in the morning so I don't have to wait for it to come up. So it's up and running during working hours, but I don't have to worry about it on weekends, holidays, anything like that. And that's all done through Lambdas. So there's some permissions and some uh, policies you need to give yourself for IAM uh, to give yourself access to it, but uh, it's not all that hard to do. Um, and that's it. That's uh, Cloud Custodian in a nutshell. Hope that was helpful.